Hey everyone, Brian here with some handy Premiere shortcut key tips and tricks. The first thing I want to show you is called Close Gap. It's a really cool shortcut, but it does not come assigned to any keyboard shortcuts by default, so we're going to have to add it. I'm going to go to my Premiere Pro menu and choose Keyboard Shortcuts, and I'll just search for Close Gap. Now I've already assigned it to a shortcut key for myself, but make sure to assign this to something that works for you. Click OK. Now here's what it does. I have here a sequence of selects that I've pulled. I've lifted the parts of the shots that I like, and the rest of this is, you know, garbage. So I'm going to duplicate my select sequence, right click, and duplicate, and I'll call this my string out. I'm going to open up my string out here, and delete all of the content from the first row. I'll just move this down. Now the thing is, I want to close all these gaps. I don't want these to all be separated from each other. So I can come in here and I can click delete, click delete, click delete. That will take us a while, especially if I have a really large sequence. Instead, the close gap command will let me close all of these gaps at the same time. Watch this. Pretty awesome. Now something else that's cool, if I just undo this for a second, is that if I know that all of these clips belong together in a group, I can select this group of clips and just use the close gap command on those, like so. This will bring all of those clips together. These all belong together, and I believe these all belong together, and these all belong together. Now I have some clips grouped together in a way that makes sense. Now something else that I want to show you here, while I'm already hovered over this clip of a horse, is that the client asked me to add more shots of horses into my sequence. Now I know that I have all my horse shots here together, but it's possible that I left out something great. So I want to go back to the bin and find all of the other shots that have horses in them. Now I've already sorted and organized my clips in the bin before I started working, but how would I get there quickly? If I had a huge bin structure with lots of bins in it, it might be hard to quickly find the bin that I'm looking for. That's where you can right click and choose Reveal in Project. Now I know it's just in the menu here, but by default it does not come assigned to a shortcut key. So for me, I've added a shortcut key. That will take me right to that spot in the bin with all of my horse clips. Now let me go back to my main editing sequence for a second and show you how I use that combined with the power of Match Frame. Match Frame is a really cool trick. Let me find a shot here for example, right here, this shot of tomatoes. And I'm going to match frame this into my source. By default, the shortcut key is F. Match frame will load an instance of this clip from the bin into your source monitor, with the in and out points isolated from the clip in your timeline. This is cool, because now we can simply change the part of the shot that we want to look at. Like right here, this is a much cooler shot than this one. I can change the in point by pushing I on my keyboard, then hold Option or Alt and drag this back into my timeline, overwriting the clip that's already in there. That's just one way to use Match Frame. But I've also set up a shortcut key from the Source Monitor that lets me right click and choose Reveal in Project as well. That will take me to all of my food shots, and I may want to find a totally different shot of food, like this one of these tomatoes instead. So I'm going to scan this shot, find the best part, make an endpoint, hold Option or Alt, drag, and replace. This is a really fast way to make revisions to your editing sequences. The next shortcut I have for you is both a shortcut and a bit of a trick. So in this movie here, I've taken a bunch of shots of these horses, and I've grouped them together in a nested sequence. I found that it was easier to organize my sequence with this nest. But the problem is, now the client wants to make some changes to this group of clips even though they told me it was locked a couple of drafts ago. Doesn't that always happen? So what I could do is this. I could double click on the nest, open it up, go inside of it, select all of my clips, Command or Control C for copy, come back to my editing sequence, change my track targeting, move my playhead, Command or Control V to paste. Oof, that's a lot of things to do just to get these clips back into my timeline. Well, let me show you another method that might work even better. I'm going to delete these clips here and return to this nested sequence. 
Now, this is just a nest. I simply took a bunch of clips, like this group of clips here, right-clicked, and chose Nest, and made a nested sequence. Now, a nest is very similar to a multicam. In fact, a multicam is basically just a nest with a couple of complicated audio settings. So what I can do is this. I can right-click on my nested sequence, come over to the multicam menu, and choose Enable. It changes what it says here, I can right-click again, choose multi-camera, and choose flatten. That will get rid of the nest or multi-cam and flatten it out and replace it with the clips that were inside of it. Now here's the cool thing. You can assign all of that to some shortcut keys. Let me just undo it. I have a shortcut key set up for multi-cam enable, just like this, and another shortcut key set up for multi-cam flatten, just like this. No need for the menus, it's a really quick and handy way to flatten out your multicams. This also works great on narrative projects where you've sunk video and audio clips together. Let me just close up these sequences here and show you another really cool keyboard shortcut that's pretty handy. Now in my recent tutorial showing you different Premiere tips and tricks, I showed you how to take a sequence from your bin, load it into the source, then take it from the source, come down to the wrench, and choose Open Sequence and Timeline. Then you can cut from your source monitor into your main editing sequence. And although it's pretty easy to set up, it's even easier when you use a couple of shortcut keys. Now here's the cool thing. Shortcut keys work on a panel by panel basis, meaning shortcut keys that you activate while the timeline is active can be the exact same keystroke that you use when the project panel is active and the exact same keystroke that you use when the source monitor is active. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me just open up my keyboard shortcuts here. And I've used this key right here, the backslash. I'm going to click on it and show you what I've set up here. With no modifiers selected, I have three things set up for this single key. First, open in source monitor. This happens in the project panel. Next, open sequence and timeline. This happens in the source monitor. And finally, move playhead to cursor, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Let me show you how that looks in action. So let me just clear my source monitor here. I have my editing sequence open. I'm going to choose my string out. I'm going to push my first shortcut key. Then I'm going to push it again. And those two button presses will load the sequence into the source monitor and the source monitor into the timeline. Now my mouse is floating in the timeline somewhere and this third press will move the playhead to where my mouse is. No need to click the mouse at all here, I'm simply using a shortcut key to do all of those things at the same time. Speaking of that last one, this works anywhere in any timeline. For example, I want to see what this group of shots is, but I want to keep my mouse cursor down here so I can select a clip if I want to. I don't want to have to move my mouse all the way to the top to click right here and see what this is. So we'll use this group over here as a sample. I want to be able to click on these clips quickly and easily without having to move my mouse up and down, up and down. I'm going to keep my mouse cursor here and press my shortcut key for move playhead to cursor. Perfect. So I simply moved the playhead to where my mouse cursor was. No need to click anything at all. Now one final shortcut key that I think is going to be very useful if you're following along with all these tips and tricks. Let me just close up this timeline for a second. I'm going to load my selects timeline this time using my shortcut keys. Great. So I have my selects on the second video track. I have the unused clips on the first video track. And I want to cut something into my timeline. This shot of tomatoes and avocados looks awesome and sounds tasty. I'm going to come down to my sequence, go to the very end, back to my source monitor. I'll choose an in point and an out point, toggle back to my sequence, and do an overwrite edit. That will cut this in. Now the thing is, it cut it in on video track number two. And that's expected, because in my select sequence, this clip is on video track number two. So I can simply take video track number two in my track targeting and move it down to video track number one. I can also turn off video tracks one and three because I don't want to cut anything from those tracks into my timeline here. 
Let me just go back to my selects and choose another select, like this one of these tomatoes. I'll make an in point and an out point, toggle back to my timeline, and do an overwrite edit. This drops on video track one. Now let's just say, for example, I've been doing a bunch of work. I'm going to close out of this sequence here. I'm going to load my string out into a timeline. This is just a string out of clips that I like. And this clip is fantastic, the water. Let me just zoom in here. I'll set an in point and an out point and return to my sequence. Now, my track targeting is still the same as it was before. I have video two checked down to video one, and I've unchecked video one and video three. If I push the overwrite edit key, nothing will happen. That's because I don't have my track targeting set up to bring in video one assets. And I also would want video one to land on video one. Let me click OK here and show you what you can do. You can right click and say default source assignment like this. And that will set everything back up to how it was before. But did you know that you can actually set up a shortcut key that will do that for you? Well, if you do as much three point editing as I do, having that shortcut key set up is going to really help you speed up your workflows and not get caught accidentally with error messages that are confusing. Now I can cut this into my timeline and everything works fantastic. Those are all the shortcut keys that I have for you. I hope that you use these shortcut keys in your workflows and even spend some time inside the keyboard shortcut menu. There are tons of tools that do not have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them by default, but totally exist in this menu. For example, the super helpful new scene edit detection can be added to a shortcut key if you use it often. So don't be afraid to check out this entire menu and find new shortcuts that work for you. Thank you.